Well, hello. Well, hello. Well, hello. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> you can't censor me. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Pencil to Pencil podcast brought to you by Clip Studio Paint and also to Tomorrow's Publishing. Uh, I am Jamar Nicholas. I'm uh, being uh, uh, censored over here. Uh, Are you censoring yourself? I'm self-censoring, Mike Manley. Um, This lovely podcast is uh, co-hosted by myself and also my best buds, Brett Blevins and uh, Mike Manley. Say hi, guys. How are you? Brett, how are you? Cool. (laughs) Uh, Great to see you all. Um, Sorry we're running a little late. Uh, Some housekeeping for anybody that's watching, and hello from YouTube. I'm happy to say, you guys, that we have just crossed over the threshold of 100 subscribers on our YouTube channel. I'm very excited. Um, very soon after this, we'll have our own URL, like a real boy. So, really? Uh, that will happen. We'll be like Pinocchio. We'll be like a, a real life boy. That's right. And uh, after that, we'll start giving out the the link to the channel. But you can always go and look at now. Look at it now. Uh, anybody that's checking in from YouTube or our Facebook pages. Um, I will be producing tonight. Uh, if anybody wants to uh, type into the comments where they're from and say hi, that's a good way to start. If you have questions for any of the hosts or our uh, very special guests, please put them in. Remember, I can't get to everybody's questions. Uh, I'll do my best. This is a very flowy, liquid conversation. If something seems to fit, and something that I think will add value to the conversation, I'll put it on. If I don't, no tears. We try to go back into the broadcast on Facebook and answer any questions. So don't feel left out. Um, also, I'm just like right in my mouth. Also, just to let you know, this is a special Tuesday episode. We'll be right back tomorrow with our Wednesday episode with our guest, Dan Panosian. And then this Saturday, Mike and Brett, we're taking off. What? That's, that's, that's right. What? Dude, I that's, didn't get the memo. <laughs> that's right. Uh, and uh, 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 observers of the 4th of July, we're going to take off and you guys can grill some burgers and and we'll be refreshed for the next, no, the next there, week. No, there'll be no grilling. No. <laughs> there'll be no grilling. All right. No fair grilling. enough. Um, so, all right. I'm going to bring our guests in. Um, this man is with... with out peer or however you say that uh he is kind of what we would call a cartoonist cartoonist an artist artist everybody in the industry when you bring his name up they go oh man <laughs> he gives you the goose pimples right lee weeks is a, a accomplished amazing illustrator and he's probably drawn some of your favorite books um and we are very happy to have him on the podcast with us tonight so let's bring them on in. Lee Weeks, ladies and gentlemen. Woo. Woo, woo, woo. Hey, everybody. Hey, how are you, sir? Good. Yourself? Good, good, good. I'm going to go uh, check out what's going on in the chat room so you guys get started. Thanks, so, Jamal. So uh, right before the uh, podcast, you were tell- telling us we, uh, if you just started working on some new pages. Yes. Can you, can you talk about the project at all, or is that um, hush, hush? I, I, if it's hush hush, I don't know that it is. So I'll just, I can tell you a little bit about it. I'm I'm actually writing a little eight page story, uh, uh, Batman related, uh, about Commissioner Gordon, uh, writing and drawing. And, uh, I, and yeah. how how did you approach that? Did you start by actually drawing it out, or you know, like roughing it visually, or did you start by actually typing it out? Um. How did I start that? I think I, I, well, first I just sent in a few bullets to the editor because they had asked me to do a this eight-page story to draw it. And I said, well, can I write it? And they said, sure. And, and uh, so I wrote out a few bullets. We picked one. Actually, we didn't pick one from the first batch. At the end of the bullets, I, I said, how about a, a, you know, if you don't want to do one of these, I'd love to do a Commission of Gordon story. But I didn't have a commission of Gordon story, so <laughs> just started thinking about thinking about um, different things that that uh, that I you know that I liked about the character and that I've liked about the the uh, um, the, the world that he operates in, and came up with a 
I, I hope a neat little angle that has to do with uh, the the bat signal, his relationship with the bat signal, and 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 Batman. But it's it's more of a Gordon story than anything. So, and uh, yeah, so I've been and, and it was a lot of slugging. Any the, the few times that I've written stuff. When people ask me what my process is, I, I have no idea. Mm. It really is a back and forth thing. Sometimes it's, I, I feel kind of stuck working out the visuals. So I have to go back to the word processing. And then I get to a point there and I'm like, well, and I have to go back to the, so there's really this back and forth, trying to find a way that the words and the pictures hand the ball off to each other in just the right places and stuff, you know? Mm. So, so then do you, do you go and make like little, little layouts and that you you, know, you sort of like rough in the copy yeah sometimes the copy will get roughed in sometimes when in longer projects i've done the whole index card thing where you build a scene because sometimes i get overwhelmed by the story so just build a scene this would be a good scene and i just set it aside as a as a possible brick to go in the wall and those <laughs> those those index cards can get shuffled around the order can change to you know, get the most story dynamic, most story tension and stuff out of it. Sometimes, uh, like what I did with this one, when I had the the pivotal point of the story, I'll just take an eight and a half by 11 and draw. Well, in this case, it was eight tiny little rectangles, but I've done issues where I just put 22 little postage stamp size rectangles on the page. And I just, I pick a spot. This is where I, I, I just by feel where I want that pivotal moment to happen and just try to work away from it in both directions. Or maybe I have two spots in my head that I have and I just, you know, try to work in between them like that. But any kind of tool I can use to help me get a handle on it, you know, sometimes seeing that, that thing acts like a schematic in front of me so I can see it one way that way and other times, but other times I just have to set that all aside and just, I don't even know if this is going to be part of the story, but I have to write about, this guy and what he might be saying at certain times and something out of that might be useful to get plugged into the story. You know, as I explained this, I like, well, maybe I do have a process. I just have never identified <laughs> it before, but honestly, I feel that way about the drawing too. When somebody says, I feel, I don't really have a process. You start explaining it. You go, Oh my goodness. I, I have a process <laughs> because it's always done. Like it's not done verbally. It's done, you know, from inside out. So. Right. Is is some of this because I know you went to the to the to the Cupid School? Is some of this uh, process something that you learned from Joe? Did you talk about that? Did he talk about his his process that way? I don't remember that. No, I didn't do any writing back then. I didn't do any. Uh, um, uh, where did I learn the? I think I learned the index card thing talking in my conversations with Dan Chichester when I worked on Daredevil with him 30 years ago. Did I really say 30 years ago? <laughs> I know. Really? No, that was this last week, Lee. You're yeah, wrong. It, it feels like it. What's weird is you take something like that that doesn't feel like it's that long ago. Mm -hmm. It's 30 years ago. It's like, well, 30 years is like a couple weekends ago, right? Yeah. Then go back from that point 30 years and you're before FF number one. And that, that, I play this bisecting game with time. Let's go back a certain amount of time. It doesn't seem like that long, 20 years, whatever. You go back the second 20 and realize that's just the halfway point between those. This is the kind of things I do to myself during the day. <laughs> just, just make yourself feel de depressed. Like, oh my God. I <laughs> Fascination with, with time and numbers and, you know, just t timing. I mean, even in narrative art, right? Like time intervals, they're fascinating. They're just. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just. Mike and I were just talking and I had a similar thing where I was thinking I've been doing this for 39 years. I went back to my first year in comics. If I go back 39 years from that, it was Pearl Harbor. Yeah. <laughs> that's shocking to, you know, to think because I can remember 1980 perfectly clearly. So. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. And 39 that's, years before that, there were brontosauruses. And, and don't you remember, like, it, that, what kind of dovetails with that, Brett? a similar type thing that I've done with uh, that type thing. You know, realize, but wait, when I was a kid in the late sixties, early seventies, Pearl Harbor seemed like forever ago. And all of a sudden it starts going, <laughs> and I do things like my, take my mother's age and 
stack it three times in a row and it's before the formation of this country. You know, yeah. this, this country is like a, a pretty brand new experiment. You know, all of a sudden it just looks totally different. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Right. So, so uh, you didn't pick up any, like Joe didn't have a, Cuba didn't have a, a particular way that he sort of advised people to start laying things out. I'm sure he did. I, I, oh, I, I thought you meant in terms of the writing and breaking, you know, forming a story. Um, I had Joe for just one semester. I only went one year. Okay. I, 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 I'm a dropout from two art schools after a year apiece. So I, I guess if I – am I technically a dropout if I, I didn't – I waited till the end of the year. I just didn't return. So, <laughs> I don't know if that – somebody told that's not really a dropout. But I, I've been to two art schools where I didn't return. I, I was a very restless spirit as a kid. And um, I do remember that uh, just in general, Joe stressed above all storytelling that it's, all, that, you know, you can draw the prettiest pictures in the world. If you can't tell the story, it doesn't mean anything. Right. And the reverse of that, you can be not the greatest draftsman in the world. And we can probably think of some people like that who are brilliant storytellers, right? That, that don't need, in fact, I would say in some of those cases, brilliant beautiful drawings might even detract from the quality of storytelling that some of those guys bring into their work. I mean, I, 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 a safe one to talk about, uh, Art Spiegelman's mouse. That would, that, that's the first uh, graphic story that brought me right to the edge of tears. I mean, I, I very, very intensely emotional. And I don't think it would have ever been anywhere near that drawn like I draw or, 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 you know, more realistic, but it's because it's so crude and raw, it becomes, the emotion of it becomes more accessible, you know? We were, we were talking about that uh, a little bit on our previous podcast mm -hmm. uh, with Kazoo because, uh, you know, you have a lot of guys that do uh, more cartoony, you know, dot yeah. eyes and things like that. Um, and you do sort of read that stuff differently and i even think that you read joe kubert stuff and jack kirby stuff in a little bit of different way you're aware of the fact that their stuff is is very expressive and and, and even though uh, i guess it's not cartoony in the bigfoot way like alley oop or something right like no you're right you yeah know. exactly because especially i mean both of them were such stylist with the figures um is that something that you that you were conscious of or you, you took you know you took away and, and I, I think as time has gone on i mean i i learned more from joe the years after i left the school you know what i mean just by studying him i remember a few years into my career where i was so frustrated with myself that i was i would put all this attention into an area of a panel or a page and uh, or feel like i was like putting everything I could into a page. And when I look at it, it looks so empty. It's like, how can these guys that are working at such speeds, how can their pages feel so full and everything? It just feel like there isn't an empty space anywhere. So I just started actually for a time, of, this is probably three or four years out of the school, um, actually just sitting, not a lot, but I did it several times. Just, I wanted to feel what that felt like. So I actually just copied line for line some Joe drawings just what does that feel like to only do that face in those few lines what is that what is that i didn't know what it felt like yeah. you know and then and, and from the time we were all in school all the guys that were we always talked about the journey to simplification but as a young person it's really it's hard to let go of that desire to i know it's there let me put it in let me put it in right. but it's in right. the taking away that you have more opportunity for expression because you you're whittling it down to those very vital lines that tell you know it's the when you mentioned those two kirby and 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 joe their lines do they're not just they're not just form lines they're doing lines you know even the, the lines in the and the drawing itself i mean look at those straight lines to the thigh muscles of kirby or whatever they're they're just everything is a is a movement and and Toth and Eisner and different different ways of 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 reaching that, but yeah, yeah. it's funny because I think even it, 
if you look at someone like uh, uh, Hubert, you look at his early work, and it was sort of this weird hybrid of like Kniff and Foster. It was this weird, like, there was kind of like a, you could see he was sort of negotiating because you get some stuff from Foster, but then you get that cartooning from Kniff, you know? Yeah. He, but I, he was also putting that energy in from Meskin. I was going to say that. I've heard that Meskin. You, you, do you see that, Brett, in it? Because yeah. I've heard it, but I don't know that I see it because I'm not familiar enough with Meskin. But you see it? Oh, yeah, especially as the earliest work. Well, he started out, I don't know if it was his first job, but he, uh, Cuba was inking Meskin as one of his, as a teenager. So he yeah. was really absorbing it right off the page. Wow. He told me the story. I've, I, a couple of other people knew this. But Meskin was um, quite neurotic for various reasons, I guess. But he had reached a point where he was so afraid of the um, paper. The white paper would paralyze him so much that he would have someone take a, a, a piece of graphite and smear tone all over the paper. And then he would smear that all out till he had a gray tone. Mm -hmm. He would draw it with an eraser. He'd pull out his shapes with white and then go back and clean everything up. Yeah. Like, yeah. Was, it, was it Al that told us that? Well, like Kubert, Joe told me too. Like, oh, okay. You know, when I, when I left the Kubert school, I, I had uh, I had really burnt out as a 21 year old. I and and I went through that where I didn't draw it. The only time in my life I didn't draw it all for probably seven or eight months. Wow. And uh, and I would get nauseous looking at white papers. I did so many, did a lot of all, too many all nighters and stuff in that year, and mm -hmm. and and I flipped the page back and forth and. <gasps> made myself crazy and it just it was an unpleasant experience and i got a job at in rockaway new jersey just a couple miles down from the school and uh made great a great friendship with a guy that was about 10 years older than me and we were working at a 7-eleven together he was down in his luck for some things and one night i pulled out a brown paper bag and a ballpoint pen and that's what started it up again that's what started the motor going because it wasn't the the brown paper bag wasn't threatening and i a couple months after that, I, I graduated to uh, cocktail napkins at, at all the di <laughs> diners in the area. We would we would head out to diners, and I'd just start scribbling, and then the enthusiasm just kind of came back. That happened another oh, time. Yeah. A few years in, I I almost quit about five years in, but wow. not not since then. Uh, Lee, I have a couple of questions from the room. One. Yeah. Uh, we kind of touched on, but maybe you can give us one more uh, campfire story. Uh, Edward says, thanks for doing this. Thank you, Edward, for joining us. Thanks for, uh, yeah. Uh, Lee, any interesting stories about the Kubert School? Now, you are about to go, you were going through one, but you got any more for it? I have one more that I've told a bunch of times, but it's still fun to tell. Okay. And in, in that period of the few years after when I started to get work, and uh, Andy, I was I was good buddies with Andy, and uh, Andy is one of the best shots we i was uh, believe it or not back then i was half the man i am today we played a lot of basketball together Andy still looks like he did 30 years ago I, i'm i i'm not so much but um and i would also bring my portfolio by to show joe he was incredibly generous you know i, I didn't stick around but anytime i wanted to have him look at work and i probably did it like maybe half a dozen times or so but it was always super helpful just to have his encouragement, even if it wasn't specifics. So one of the things that used to happen, I, I, I did GI Joe covers uh, for a year. In fact, Andy handed that gig off to me. I, I owe Andy an awful lot. And um, when I would ink the mechanical stuff, the uh, tanks and such, I got this comment a few times that, oh, your stuff looks like Russ Heath. Now I knew who Russ Heath was, but I, I, I was not familiar with his work at all. But I heard it like three or four times. And uh, I was like, really, I don't, you know, I, I didn't know why, I guess the way I rendered the metal and stuff. And so one of these trips, months later, a year later, whatever it was, over to Joe's, I had some pages. I was actually working with Al at the time, so it would have been 1990, 91. And uh, several times because of the scheduling and, and my own inability to go super fast, um, I would have to ink the last couple pages because Al couldn't get to them. And I'd ink the last two or three pages of this one issue. And there's this one page where uh, there was a young guy with a handgun and, and in an apartment, and there was a cat in the window. And 
I don't remember exactly what the scene was, but I Joe got to that page and goes, oh, Russ Heath. And I said, you're like the fourth or fifth person that told me I ink like Russ Heath. He goes, ink like him? So that young guy, he looks like a young Russ Heath. <laughs> so I, I drew this young guy that looked like Russ Heath, I guess. But but uh, it was just funny that it was. I I thought he was talking about the Yankee. So that's that's the first thing that pops to mind. Uh, I have. Uh, there's another question that was kind of right on top of that one. Uh, uh, Sorry about that. Comcast is really being wacky tonight, so I didn't uh, miss the the end of your uh, of your of your story, Lee. But uh, I'll watch it on the. On the on the re rebound, we'll we'll edit that in post. Uh, uh, Ari, am I saying her name correctly? Uh, so, when first starting out, Lee, how did you practice your storytelling skills? Is there an element of storytelling that you focus on the most while working? Thanks for that question. Uh, that's a great question, actually. Is there an element I work on the most? Um, I, I you know I, I just to tell you what I usually do when I have the script I, on the computer now that we can change format I I usually reformat so that I get a nice wide margin on the right side so that as I'm reading through if something flashes to my head I just I put some sort of a little visual cue that I, I you know, if I have a shot idea or something I I litter the the right side with that even on the first read I just try to read through really quickly so um I, I don't think so. I mean, I because I, I feel like I, I try to emphasize uh, um, the beats, the timing, the uh, you know, um, but acting is super important to me. I, I think there's there's a really lack of, I mean, I, it's not fair for me to say because I don't see a whole lot of comics the last 10 or 20 years. Sorry, but I really don't. I don't see that. <laughs> but it seems like the acting is, at least in the mainstream books, is something that a, a lot of younger artists maybe struggle with. And uh, so, so subtlety of acting. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not even sure if, if I answering the question, I don't remember what the question is. Yeah. Do you think of the story as a, as a unit with pieces that you're interrelating or do you start with character motivation and let that pull you through? Um, well, one of the things I try to do, and, and I, I can relate this to a book that I think does it as well as any mainstream book I've ever seen. You know, Batman Year One was such a, a, a brilliant book. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, you can pull out individual pieces of that that it's like, well, that doesn't look like much by itself. But in the context of everything that comes before and after, it's like, oh, mind blowing, you know, so good, so powerful, emotional. So I, I, I try to be cognizant of, of preserving the, the, the climax, preserving the crescendo. Because a lot of people use up so much juice early on, you don't have, you know, you're always trying to, it becomes like a junkie mentality where you're always trying to put a little bit more in the needle and uh, um, in order to get the, uh, and I just think there's a way to control it that it was just beautifully done in that book and plenty of others. But that one's just, I, I'm just not sure that a, a mainstream you know, one of these company-owned characters. I don't, I don't know that it's ever been done better. And was, was that, so was that like a a touchstone for you, like a like a book that you looked at and yeah, that really sort of changed your process, how you? I think so. I, I, I mean, everything kind of, I, I feel like I'm influenced by everything. When I started teaching at the school, like one of the first things I said to the students was, we're going to have a contest because I'm going to be trying to learn more from you than you learn from me. Because I think I can, I can learn from those. You know, there are things that. So, but certainly the time that that came out, because that was about a year or two after Born Again, right? That they did together, David and and they, they, Miller. Something like that. Yeah, I think they came out like a year apart or two years apart. But the 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 Born Again stuff was happening. Um, when I think I was still working at Seven Eleven or just after. So I re really resonated with the guy that had lost everything because that's, as a 22-year-old 20, at the time, that's kind of how it felt. So emotionally, that was my favorite. There's some great emotion in Batman Year One, but that one's more of like a, an intellectual, uh, just a brilliant, brilliant piece of work. With, is, that, is that what attracts you? talking about rhythm. What's that? It sounds like you're talking about rhythm, almost like a musical 
composition where the yeah. shit come and pay off with the build up. Yeah, it's all rhythm, right? Even within a page, within a scene, within a it's all I, I, when I, the few things I've written, I always feel like I'm writing lyrics to a song because they've if it doesn't feel, if I don't feel that that, 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 that it danced through the words, I got to go back and like, and I think I do the same thing with the pictures. Sometimes it might be just bringing the, you know, I'm trying to put my hand so that it's the, the panel border. The difference mm -hmm. between the panel border being this far above the head and cropping this much changes the emotion and the beat and those little tiny changes and what how they ripple through a page and ripple through a scene i just think it's one of the most exciting things to see tiny little moves like that go whoa just cascade through the the whole thing and change it, it every change changes everything you know just it, it, it yeah. Yeah. and i don't even know that i really understand rhythm i just I, but as a gut as a feel thing i know that's what i'm looking for when you when you was that the first time you were aware? Were you were were you not aware of that in like looking at other stuff you read before? Like like what were you reading before you went to the school and, and like maybe like your your deep origin? What were you think? What was attracting you to want to do comics? In the very beginning, it was uh, I'm the fourth of five boys. And the number two boy was Eric was my hero, and he was, I just and uh, so it, it, it was more wanted to be him. Did he? Did you? Did he turn you on to reading comics? Oh yeah, yeah. He, my two oldest brothers did very much. Yeah. So, so you were sort of influenced. I guess it happens with like younger siblings and yeah you, they sort of said hey read these what, and what kind of comics were you reading my brothers were big marvel heads eric though he loved everything and i also remember i don't know where we got these i i, I the, the place where i feel like the hobby became my own i always i don't know if it's exactly here but i just have kind of ff 112 you know that first busama run was was busama's was my comic pro hero i mean we were, honestly it was it was Busema Adams, Ditko, and then Colin when I discovered Colin. It was all the guys that we all love, right? I mean, for different reasons. I, FF and Spidey were my two favorite books growing up. And, I, and years later, I see FF in retrospect. I see that as a, a great plot-driven book with really cool character stuff, whereas I see Spidey as a tremendous character-driven book with some really cool plot stuff. It's like they're almost like uh, reflections of one another in that way. But uh, so it was. It was all the mainstream stuff. My brother Eric, though he everything. Uh, Malcolm, the oldest brother, he was the first one to bring. I think it was Spidey Twenty Four or something. That was the first one that got brought into the house. I don't remember that. <laughs> and he's he's about eight years older than me. But that Busema run was, and and I, there were things that I could tell were different about. At, at what I have been, I would have been like nine or ten years old. But I didn't know what why it was so different. I just knew it felt different. And looking back on it, I just it's that sense of volume and weight and mass and just the way things really just were like, wow, I really feel him pulled to the ground. You see a 240 pound cap and he looks like he's being held to the earth by 600 pounds of pressure. You know, it's like you couldn't pull him off the ground. And it, that magic trick. John is like um, I, he was a magician. He, yeah. he, he was a magician. The stuff he, the, the way he would build tension in his drawings and stuff with just a little extra bend in the in the shin bones to create that. One of the things. I mean, I I haven't uncovered. I've, I've probably uncovered a tiny fraction yeah. of what it is, but those kind of things that gave that sense. I I think he was unbelievable. I, and some of those guys that I I that we, you know, I feel like I understand more of some other people but there are certain guys like john i don't even though it's really straight ahead I, I i feel like i could study him for you know uh 50 years and so i just think he was brilliant yeah uh, lee i have uh, another question from the room there's a ton of questions i'm just gonna i'm gonna mix them into the batter slowly as we go along <laughs> um so oh, i just moved hold on a second Oh, Did I do that? Did I do that? No, it's just more people are chatting. Ryan Green, hello, Ryan, says, Lee, 
Can you tell the story of the time Joe inked your Ghost Rider? I think that's what it was. Uh, it, I, Joe inked Andy's Ghost Rider. He didn't ink, he didn't ink my Ghost Rider. Oh, wow. I was, wow. I was never inked by Joe. I was never inked by Joe. I wish I had been, but <laughs> I was right. I'm going to. I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up with this one. This is uh, more current, and Lee, I pulled uh, uh, images for this. So uh, the Ringos are in the house. Uh, Matt says the Batman Superman variant cover and process drawings Lee posted today are terrific, and thank you, thank you guys. And uh, Lee, if you're okay with that, can I share that on the screen oh. and maybe you can go through it? Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. That'd All be right, great. Cool. All right, let me let it, let me get them here. <clears throat> Uh, all right. So would you mind kind of going through your process and then I'll just advance the slides? Sure. So this this your... was, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no it's, it's all you. Go ahead. This was uh, one of about five or six thumbnails that I had done for this cover. And it was the last one I wanted to do that I wished I hadn't sent. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. there were too many things in there I hadn't worked out in the thumb. I just wasn't sure of what to do. But then they chose it, and I said, oh, I, I knew I shouldn't have sent that one. <laughs> but, uh, so I had to start looking into it a little more to find the cover. And I, I'm really glad they picked that one. And what size is this thumb at? Is this like an a index card or a, a, it's like a corner of a? I'll do f probably four of these on an 8.5 by 11, but they're, you know, it's less than a quarter of the 8.5 by 11 because there's plenty of space around them. Mm -hmm. So I think I do. I think I do four of those on a. It might even be smaller than that, but but it's it's uh, just a thought scribble, you know. Just a, mm -hmm. so, so so you do it the size that you don't want to get too stuck on the drawing. More about the shape. Oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah I I yeah that's yeah I still one of the things I've done a tiny bit of digital. One of the things that helps me to do is avoid that thing that you just mentioned, Mike. I find it a little easier to avoid that sometimes. And it's actually helping me to break out of that more when I, when I do, because I do mostly traditional. I try to do as much traditional as possible, but I also want to learn the digital. But I find that being able to do stuff digitally helps me to, I don't want to get hung up on drawing. Yeah. So I'm going to go to the next slide. So now you're, tightening this up so can you talk about how you got to this point are you blowing up the thumb uh, or are you just using that as reference off to the side how did we get here i i think i just used it as reference off to the side and one thing you notice is superman is pushed back and batman's come forward and that was the biggest change that kind of unlocked where the cover was in this for me because that that thumb was really bothering me and one of the things that bothered me about it was it just looked like it was over before it got started because Batman looks like he's going to, he's about to collide into the back of Superman. He's going to crumble to nothing. And, uh, but this kind of gave a neat tension and, you know, better visual dynamic because bringing him forward and, you know, Superman's giving him a head start kind of a thing. <laughs> but, uh, so, and he, 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 you know, Superman's the flyer, but it just seemed like a, on a few levels, a neat, but at this point, I was considering, if you can see all the perspective lines, yeah, I was considering like wrapping them up in a cocoon of buildings. Mm -hmm. But the more I did that, the more it seemed to uh, get in the way. So I, I ended up going with minimal buildings. And the other thing too is those, the, the, from this angle, for those background buildings to be that tall, they'd have to be like, you know, three quarters of a mile tall or something like yeah. <laughs> as far back as I wanted to push them. So I had to think of that as well. I mean, that's one of the things that, that uh, we were going back to people like Sema or, or Kubert or Kirby, they would be willing to break all kinds of rules to get those feelings that you're talking about. You know what I mean? And uh, Absolutely. Nick Carty was such a great cover artist for DC. He did so many awesome covers like that i remember one that really impressed me as a kid where it's like it's it's one of those it must probably be laid out by carmine uh Infantino, but it's superman and his body is stretching back and swirling down into the middle of the earth or something and they did a lot of stuff that 
to me it seems more more fun but i guess maybe people don't like to have that kind of fun to it seems like that's silly <laughs> no i think that i remember uh being in the cubit school and looking at a big a lot of joe art hanging around and there was one with a big horse on front i looked at him like there's an extra segment on his front legs and, you know there's a whole extra like there was one too many and it looked awesome and i think it wouldn't have looked as good if he'd done it right and it, 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 so sometimes wrong is right and and i i, I remembered i the first uh was that the first? The first Batman book I did was actually back uh, '97. I did it with a friend, Bruce Campbell, from my old comic shop days. He had a story idea, loved it, and in the middle of that, I did some stuff. I think it was the first time I really felt it. What you're talking about, where I did stuff I knew was wrong, like with Shadow, and it's like, but it works. It looks better, and it was the kind of thing that. Uh, um, it was a beginning. Yeah, I feel like I do a lot more of that now. I don't worry so much about, you know, if I use some multiple light sources, I'm not as worried about figuring out every reason why a reflective light might be there or whatever. Because we really, there's so many sources of light bouncing around. You know what I mean? I, 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 if, I, if it looks right, that's something Joe used to say. If right. it looks right, it is yeah. right. Yeah. 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 But but it takes a while to get confident to do that, I think. Or, it, I mean, confidence is is a is a long journey for me. So, right. Lee, do you want to oh, go ahead, Mike? Go ahead. No, I was going to say that that's. I think when you're younger, and yeah, I think you kind of touched on this. When you're younger, you kind of want to show what you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You really kind of want to show what you you feel like. Oh, I know. There's all these things in the elbow. I'm I should put them in, and then people will know that I really know how to draw an elbow. <laughs> right, and you'll show them. Yeah. And you know what? What's happened with you know the advent of 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 uh, I don't want to pick on anybody. This is years ago. <laughs> Hopefully, I can hide this. But as as you get able to say more with less, you know, when mm -hmm. form is there that you don't really see. I, I've moonlighted as a, I, I do a lot of magic card tricks, and I used to do a lot. I don't do it yeah. anymore. And I find there to be such an overlap, honestly, with all the arts, whether it's poetry, music, film, you know, we're all just trying to, with tension and release, trying to create this. Uh, here's the thing that is, I'm jumping around now. The thing that I shoot for the most, whether it's in the narrative part, the storytelling, or the actual drawing, or whatever in, in the emotional beats the, the, the is I don't want to do the thing to you I want to do just